I guess that leads me to my gold medal topic. Um, I, I really think the implications of this one are fascinating. Uh, Adam Silver, the commissioner of the NBA, he sent out a memo to all the NBA players, basically as a preemptive strike to what happened in the NFL, saying, you will stand for the national anthem. Yeah. And uh, it's gone over completely fine. No one's said anything. Oh, wait, actually, Kobe said something. J.R. Smith has already said something. Yeah. I mean, you, when you have former and current players already saying stuff, I feel yeah. like it's just... Troubles a brewing. I think the I think the quietness is like this calm before the storm mm -hmm. is kind of scary for the NBA. I feel like they think like something's gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's like you said. Kobe said he would take a knee. Uh, J.R. Smith saw the tweet. It was from maybe Bleacher Report. I think they said like Adam Silver sends out memo that they have to stand for the national anthem, and J.R. Smith is like, I right, bet. Yeah. <laughs> but a guy like J.R. Smith says, I I bet. That's uh, a little scary. So I, I don't. I mean, he he only went through the championship parade shirtless. I don't right. know what you're talking about. He's just totally normal. And anytime, anytime a brother says, "I bet something about to happen," right, right. <laughs> especially with a guy like J.R. Smith, who is, who is infamous for being faded off the henny. That, as he says, you know, I something is gonna something's gonna happen. I don't know what it is, but it's definitely gonna be something. You have a league that hinges on being eighty percent black. Uh, the top player, the top faces in the league, the president of the NBA Players Association is black, and he's very on the side of social justice, Chris Paul. So it's just like, uh, I'm, ex I'm excited to see what happens. Um, and I, th I think what Adam Silver, the way Adam Silver messed up, and I think the uh, majority of America does this a lot, I think Adam Silver is just like, everything's cool in the NBA, everybody's been, you know, whatever. We haven't had this turmoil like the NFL. So for, I think when he said that, he wasn't saying it in a way like, you better stand. It's just like, hey, this is the rule. Everything's been good. What do we have to worry about? And Adam Silver's not really thinking about like what these players are really protesting about. He's more thinking of saving face for his league. And I think he might have, he might pay for that in the long run, but not thinking. But I thought about it. I'm kind of confused here because if you look at everything Adam Silver has done, right. he took over. David Stern. It's kind of like a switch up. They've been all the right moves. Like, if you even include removing the All Star game from Charlotte and putting it in New Orleans right. because of the uh, the legislation um, that that right. happened there, the I think. Yeah. I think you look at it and you're just like, well, you've done all this stuff, Adam Silver. Yeah. Why are you all of a sudden making this shift? Because a couple weeks ago, they had the letter that he and the president of the uh, NBA Players Association wrote yeah. about social justice and how they wanted their athletes to, stand to up. be yeah. at the forefront of the social justice issues in the country right now. Right. So I'm confused as to why you won't allow those same players after saying all of that a couple weeks ago to now turn and say, hey, we're not going to let you take a knee. Yeah. That's confusing. I, I think it's great. Talking out of both sides of your mouth. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, I think that really is the first major mistake right. in the Silver administration. Yeah, and uh, I think it's a big one. And I've always said this about Adam Silver; he's had it really easy. You know, it's been kind of an easy road. Now, this the first big call. thing happens. You're gonna find out what happened to J David Stern yeah. uh, when he got vilified, and it's it's not. I think I think the honeymoon period is, with, over. is over with him. It's official. Because I think what sets the NBA and the NFL apart is the NFL is all about brand, the shield, the owners create the culture, and the players you do the work for us and we get paid. The NBA is very player oriented because it's so global. I think what Adam Silver didn't take into effect account is. Coach, the coaches of the NBA are going to stand behind their players. Oh, yeah. Steve Kerr, we've heard his comments on Trump. We've heard his comments on the state of America. Greg Popovich, I would I, say Greg Popovich makes so many white people uncomfortable with his comments saying, I mean, he literally said, white, it's like this country runs a 100-meter dash and white people have a 50-yard head start. Like, he said that on camera. He said race is the elephant in the room. Exactly. And then, then you have guys like Van Gundy who consistently yes, talk, Van Gundy. talk about racism and politics and things like that. So... If you already know, but Draymond Green goes to Steve Kerr and says, hey, bro, we, you know what? We're not even coming out the locker room for a national anthem. You think Steve Kerr is about to yell at them and be whatever? Steve Kerr got back issues, bro. He's trying to win another championship. He's not about to deal with all that, especially when he kind of feels the same way. And that's another thing. In the NFL, you have all these coaches, even the black coaches that are on this all lives matter 
to Uncle Tom type thing, whereas you got white coaches in the NBA calling out white supremacy. It's a completely different culture. So you got you already have coaches that low key don't want to stand for the national anthem, and now you're putting their players in a position where the players can make this decision to really shake things up in the league. Because at the end of the day, NBA is still gonna come on come on TV, and LeBron James is gonna dunk the basketball. So if LeBron James stands up for the national anthem or not, he's playing. And if you're Adam Silver, you know that. So I don't even know, like you said, why he made that statement. It was kind of a uh, like a reverse of everything else he said, and I, I think it's because like white America really plays on symbols, like. To, like taking the All Star Game from Charlotte to New Orleans, I really feel like is a symbol. They it was more of a symbol. Cause think about it, how many transgender employees are th are there in the NBA? Are they really making that much change for transgender people? No, they're not. But it was a symbol. We look good, and so like now you're messing with the flag, you're messing with the national anthem, another symbol. So yeah, I might be this progressive, this liberal, but I'm not gonna mess with white America symbols. So you better stand up. So that's the way I see it. Yeah, well, I was actually just thinking about this. Do you think? I was going to say the NBA is the most progressive league, but let me take it a step further. Do you think the NBA is the only progressive league? That the WNBA. Yeah, I mean, well, yes. not really a league. So they, Whoa, wow. I mean, they, they, get, Come on, they do a great job selling soda in the summer. Oh, I mean, yeah, the stadium. <laughs> Chill. They, the Lynx won the, the ones won the championship last night, man. Chill. Oh yeah, great job by the way. You cursed them. On I did. <laughs> you I, cursed I just the love the Sparks. I like, bro. I love the Sparks so much, and I love the WNBA, and I really want to see the Sparks get back to back. And I just yeah. feel like nobody in the city cared. So well, that was some good bass. There was a really good basketball in, play in that game. In that last game, I, I thought it was decent. Oh, they play good basketball. It's just they don't know how to sell or promote. They, there's no one in the stands. Yeah. There's no one in the stands, really. Yeah. It's, it's a shame. It's rough. It's but, rough. but yeah, all their players were kneeling and sitting for the national anthem in the WNBA. Yeah, they've been doing it for a while. They've been on the forefront of social justice for, for a while. while. And like I said, like I said on Secret Black People meeting, black women are usually on the forefront of this. Black women are doing it. Nobody's talking about it. But if Draymond Green sits down, oh, my God. I'm like, come on, dog. Women have been doing this for like a whole season. So. I think... I think personally, I might just have a little bit of jealousy because even if they kneel, they're still taller than me, and it just like hurts me. <laughs> like I hate that. <laughs> I just I'm so bitter. But yeah. Shout out to Maya Moore. Uh, congrats. She's won what five championships? One of the best shooters I've ever seen. She's, She's amazing. She's had an amazing career. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, Adam Silver, you effed up, bro. Yeah that, yeah, that was a great point, by the way, WNBA. I didn't even think about that. But Nobody's watching. Uh, we will be right back with the uh, Podium of Shame and the Winner's Circle right after commercial for one of our Channel 310 shows. Be right back. So